we get a lot of questions about our front porch welcome signs. How do you do it? How'd you do it with the wood? How'd you do it with the vinyl? Well, we're going to show you our three favorite methods for making our front porch welcome signs, and we'll show you how we do it right now. Oh my god! What is up? A welcome back! Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? We do too. <laughs> and we do it every week. This week, we're making three versions of a front porch welcome sign with a little independent flavor, a little 4th of July, and we're gonna use three methods. We're gonna go awesome, better, and best. <laughs> we're going cricket, cheap, $5 version. Then we're gonna go X-carve with like a wider version, like using three pickets wide, going deep. <laughs> and then the last one, we're gonna try a one by 12 and using our glow forge. Yeah. <laughs> Sign number one. The one we're doing with the cricket, $5. We needed one gothic picket, doo -doo, with the pointy top. It was like $1.42. Mm -hmm. And we needed two dog-eared pickets. These were like a dollar seventy-two. I'm not good at math, but that's like five bucks ish. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna chop down this gothic picket. We're gonna get two pieces at eleven and a quarter. So you wanna make sure? You're just gonna you've already chested it? Eleven and a quarter. Now, if you don't have a pocket saw, you can always use the one at the Hover and Trimming store over in the trim area. It'll take a little bit of elbow grease, but it works. Time for some Gorilla Glue. <laughs> We're not even going to nail it. We're just going to use this Gorilla Glue. A little bit of Gorilla Glue, a little bit of time. Bond it right together, just like nails. We're going three and a half inches from the top and two and a half inches from the bottom. Don't go too heavy, because this stuff gets puffy. Now we're just gonna clamp it down. All right, two hours. We'll wait. All right, remember how I said it gets all puffy? You see that? You see that right there? That puff. <laughs> puff. Little puff. See, a little puff on the back. To my Ooh. face. Getting real close to Kim's face. <laughs> Sorry, babe. I didn't see you there. So we just use this little teeny spatula. It chips right off. And done. So it was never there. Now we're gonna paint. We're gonna use this white bare chalk paint to so just give it a coat. Give it a coat. Yes, so this bare chalk paint comes from Home Depot. And the great thing about this is if you want chalk paint in a larger quantity, you can get it in this quart size mixed in any color that you want. So we just got one of these mixed up in white because we use white chalk paint all the time. A lot of it. Yes, so. A lot of it. Home Depot, not a sponsor. No. But hit me up, Home Depot. But you should be. <laughs> oh, I don't even need the plate. Going in. We just want a good coat on? Yes. Lots of times, most of the time, we stain these. But with this one, we're going to do the red, white, and blue Independence Day theme. So we're going to start with a white base. I wanted to mention the sanding. So a lot of people ask questions around whether or not we sand these boards. Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Sometimes they're already they're always pressure treated, but they're super smooth and nice and all you have to do is stain it or paint it. But sometimes like these boards, they were very rough, very rough. So we did a quick sand, smoothed it out a little. It's still pretty rough, 
So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be a front porch sign, but we just sanded them a little so the paint goes on easier and it doesn't like tear up your brushes. And you'll get a better seal on your stencil with your Mod Podge. It won't be so rough, so you won't get any uh, paint that slips underneath that stencil. Next step, create our stencil using our Cricut. I created an SVG, actually Garrett created it for me in Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. Illustrator, yeah. Illustrator. And so I just imported that SVG into the design space and then I ungrouped all of the letters and stars and then grouped what would fit on a 24 inch mat. So some of them are 22, some of them are 19 and I think one of them is 24 or something like that. So I just kind of grouped what would fit on the mats that we have and then I have three stencils. Now we have all of our stencils cut and transfer tape applied. Okay so now we have the transfer tape on top and we'll start peeling off the back of our stencil leaving the adhesive part exposed. Remember keep it tight. You need a tight peel. You want to keep it folded, folded tight enough so that the vinyl doesn't want to come with the backing. This stuff is also really great for reuse, the transfer tape. You can save it and use it again. Again and again. So I know you guys have heard us say this a hundred times now, but the number one trick with stencils on this rough wood is to Mod Podge the stencil first. Now I've had a couple of people say that the Mod Podge didn't work so great for them. And I'm not really sure if they're adding too much Mod Podge and it's, it's just, getting too wet. It's just a thin coat. Yes, thin coat. just a thin coat. You just want to get it right up against that vinyl and let it dry just a little bit so it creates a barrier for the paint. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the top, the top was up. <laughs> oh no, you got it all over the floor. It's all over me, babe. Oh, you be alright. <laughs> That's what I get for throwing it around. I think the top is broken. Oh, that sucks. Advanced tomorrow. Oh! Oh my gosh. All right, now we paint. I hope we have enough paint. All right, let's go. Give me a brush before it dries. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. I'm you doing blue. It? America's in blue. Okay. We'll is do. It? Uh, well, yes, I'll do bless in red. And then we'll do God in blue, given that... Ooh, there's a lot of blue down here already. <laughs> yeah, that was not the original plan, just so you know. Where's our little... Where's my mock-up over here that I drew up? Yeah. Oh no, we mocked it up. That was blue, so lucky for you. All right. So, uh, we have a surprise for you guys at the end. <laughs> it's going to be a good surprise. We'll show you at the end. <laughs> We're going to remove the stencil now. The paint isn't completely dry, but it's almost dry. The tricky part here is... Not touching the white again. Yes. Don't let your stencil touch the white. You don't want paint everywhere. Alright, looks pretty good, all except for one thing. And we'll show you guys... Uh... Did you notice it? You have to, you have to guess what it is. We'll show you at the end. 
<laughs> Sign number two. We just need four of the gothic pickets. And they're $1.42 each. Again, I'm no mathematician, but that's like $5.68. <laughs> just so you know, he just asked Alexa before we hit record. Damn it. What $1.42 times four was. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna cut one of these down. We need two sections, that's 12 inches. Three of these all together are 12 inches. And then we're gonna trim three of them down to 67 inches. That's just past the curve. Now we're just gonna glue down these 12 inch little pieces to the backs of the board and then tack them down with a three quarter inch brad. You could use the Gorilla Glue like we did on the last project, but this one we won't have to wait for the glue to dry. The nail, not the guy. Oh, I'm sorry. I ruined your joke. <laughs> I'm going to paint them red, white, and red. And we're going to put blue at the top, but I was going to paint them before we assembled them. So we were overzealous, so now it's going to be a little tricky. <laughs> Alright, paint looks great. It does. It really is pretty. I love it. Now we need some letters. So I'm going to take this quarter inch sheet of MDF, two foot by two foot, down to the CNC machine and I'm going to carve out our letters and some stars. I'm back with our little MDF letters. They look so cute. I'm going to take these out and spray paint them black. I am not going to try to get the paintbrush in each of these little nooks and crannies. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. So, no, to make the paint job a little easier, he's going to spray paint them. Alright, we're back. We got our letters all painted. Our stars are all painted. Looking a little shiny. Oh, yeah. It's okay. I that's told good. him we weren't painting a car. It should have been some sort of spray chalk paint. <laughs> He's got the high shine lacquer finish on these. Yeah, I wanted him to pop. <laughs> I mean, where's the bling? <laughs> right? Okay. Alright, so now we're going to glue them down and then pin them with a 5 8 inch brad. The nail, not the guy. <laughs> Looking good. All right, sign number two. Sign number three. This one is probably the most expensive because the one by 12 that we're using is like $17 for an eight foot board. That's the most expensive backing that we've used. Yes. And we're using the Glowforge. That's an expensive piece of equipment. And we're using some one eighth inch MDF. But this one should be the coolest. I'm hoping this one is the coolest. <laughs> it should be have the most detail to it, the most pop. So uh, we'll see. First thing we're gonna do is paint this thing red. We already had this piece of scrap, so we didn't have to. We didn't have to. We didn't have to. <laughs> we already had this piece of scrap, so we didn't have to go off and spend $17, but uh, just so you know. It's cheaper with the pickets. Yes, it is. I almost chose to just do this one with the pickets, but since we had this board and given the design that we're gonna use, we just decided to go with it. And we're just coming in with the same red paint. All right, well, my pools of paint are drying. I'm going to take this MDF outside and I'm going to spray paint this white. 
I'm gonna let these dry nice and dry. I'm gonna add some blue masking tape to them. I can't let the masking tape overlap, otherwise the laser won't cut all the way through. That's how sensitive it is. I'm gonna throw it in the Glowforge and I'm gonna cut it out. All right, everything's back from the Glowforge. Everything's painted. Remember, it's all painted underneath here. We're just gonna glue it to the board. All right, we have all the little painter's tape off. It's all laid out. It's already popping. But now we're gonna lay it down permanently with some of this clear Gorilla Glue. This says leave it for two hours to cure and like 24 hours for a total cure, but uh, I'll be back in like 30 minutes. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, what you think? Three of them's. Did you guys notice what was wrong with this one right here, the cricket one? Huh? Did you notice? Did you notice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave us a comment down below if you figured out what it was. So which was your favorite? The cricket, the X-Carve with 3D letters, the MDF, or the Glowforge? Ooh. Look at that Glowforge. I bet you guys can guess which one's my favorite. <laughs> we're gonna put this SVG up in our store and we're gonna include the unfinished kits for the welcome letters and uh, this 4th of July cutout. Remember to join us on Patreon for any extra content like outtakes, like Why somebody's blue? blue paint might have exploded. <laughs> <laughs> These guys right here get to see all that kind of stuff. And we'll see you next week where you and I will do it, build it, or make it again. Huh?